Hi there. Uh, we're going to do it. me, your friendly neighborhood uh, stroke assaulter. We're going to continue on another letter of the alphabet, that being H. H is for help. I don't think I've done this one before. The um, reason behind it was um, one of the people in the one of the Facebook groups I belong to was asking about post-stroke fatigue. If you're not familiar with post-stroke fatigue, I'll leave a link in the comments description part down below for the link for that. Now, because post-stroke fatigue is such a thing, and for some people, you might only last two to three months, and other people, it could be a lifelong endeavor, and it could be anything really in between. Um, I can't speak to specifically anyone's post-stroke fatigue but mine. Mine is still ongoing. I'm still in the first six months, um, in the middle of month four, right? So, yeah, I still get fatigued. Now, the reason why H is for help is because you're going to need help. That is just the cut and dried thing. Um, what are you going to need help with? That depends on how your stroke has impacted you. Like, are you learning how to walk again? Now, I had to learn how to walk again, so to speak, from not a complete, you know, in, invalided point. Um, I had to learn how to do stairs again and how to walk with a normal gait again and, and actually just walk. So it was fluid and reciprocating. But if you have people that literally have to learn how to walk again, that's another story. Um... Are you having vision problems? Do you have other mobility problems? Do you have communication difficulties? Are you unaware of one side of your body or not, right? Because um, if you're not aware of the left side of your body, that becomes an issue, right? Uh, so there are many reasons why you might need help. And while you're going through post-stroke fatigue, especially during the acute phase, and I'm going to label acute as zero to six months, um, from the, the immediacy of the stroke to at least six months, right? Because that's when you're going to do most of your major healing and most of your major um, um, advances. You're going to need help. That could be everything from you can't bend over, so you're going to need someone to get things from lower positions. Um, that could be you can't lift things. Um, you may have been given... Um, by your doctor, a weight load limitation, like you will not lift anything over 15 pounds. Done. Um, laundry, groceries, right? Uh, you may have difficulty with stairs. Um, you may have balance issues. There are many reasons why you're going to need to seek help um, from other people. Uh, and you know what? That's okay. Ultimately, they're either horrible humans, and they're going to say, no, suck it up, you don't need help, quit your bitching, quit your belly aching, oh, other people have had strokes, you're not so special, and those are horrible humans, and, and you need to immediately, immediately get rid of them, like, they are done, like, you and me don't need to talk again, really ever, right, we're good, um, you'll go to your part of your horrible little world, and I'll just ignore the fact you exist, um, or they're going to be there, right? Um, and I'll be honest, I've had a, an excellent group of close friends that have been there by far and large um, uh, that have helped me a, a great deal uh, with, you know, uh, going and doing laundry, uh, grocery shopping, um, just general odds and sods running around, whatever the case may be. They've been absolutely brilliant, and, and I'm very thankful to them um, for the help they provided. Um, even on days where I knew it was going to be a shit show, but I knew I needed to, to get out of the house. So, that being said, um, I knew that I needed their help, and I asked for it, and, and they were more than helpful, especially in the first couple of months. It was pretty daunting. Um, there's still things I can't do, but there's nothing I can do about that, except for try to see if I can do it. So, what that comes down to is do not be afraid to ask for help right whatever that may be um and again this isn't you 
trying to be difficult. This isn't you trying to monopolize their time. This isn't you trying to have a pity party. This is you legitimately, hey, I need help. Right? I need help with fill in the blank. Whatever that may be, that, that is. It could be, you know what, I can't bend over, so could you please get that item on the bottom shelf in the grocery store or in uh, like a Walmart or a Home Depot? Um, it could be, you know, I need you to take me to an appointment because there's no way I'm going to get there on my own. It's in another city. Um, you know, I'm going to get confused, whatever the case may be. Um, it could be help put groceries away, right? When you get home, um, it could be, Hey, can you get the things on the upper shelf and can you, you know, put them somewhere else? Cause I can't reach that or the things on the lower shelf in my house. Can you get those and put those somewhere else? Cause I can't reach those. Um, you know, uh, you might need someone, you know, to help in some of the most mundane ways, right? Things that you probably thought you would never, as a fully functional, fully grown, you know, developed adult human, would have to depend on someone or ask someone to do. It's not something you would you would ever think you would need to do, or want to do, or have to do. Um, I don't like asking for help. I don't. Um, However, it's a thing I've had to learn how to do. Um, it's not easy, right? It's humbling in a way, um, in, in a lot of ways. So don't be afraid when you have to ask for help, especially during the first zero to six months, because... Think, think about what you've gone through. You've gone through the immediacy of the stroke. Like, you're on the floor, you know, curled up in a ball. You can't talk. You can talk. You can't see. You can see. Like, whatever your symptomology was, however your stroke presented it, you know, you had a stroke. Um, so then you end up in the hospital. And then you end up on a neurological unit or ICU or then you end up in a stroke step down or a cardiac monitoring or a fill in the blank, right? You end up seeing so many doctors in the first couple of days, it is just unreal, right? Um, and then you get the, are you going to a rehab and, and recovery facility um, or are you going home? And then you get that whole negotiation of your new world. Um, for those of you that are younger like myself, you then have the, oh, God, what am I going to do for work, possibly? Oh, God, I can't go to work right now. I want to go to work. I don't feel useful. That whole post-stroke sense of isolationism. Um, you know. Um, so there's a lot, of, a lot of things going on there in the first three to six months. Right? When I first got out of the hospital, I stuttered all the time. I stuttered and stammered. And my biggest, I still occasionally do, um, my biggest concern was, um, what if this never goes away? Because it's a potential, right? It's a potential. What if this never goes away? Right? Um, you are going to have some of the darkest thoughts you've ever possibly had, right? At one point, I'm thinking, do I need to check in, in into a nursing home? And if I had to get that level of help, because at one point that was a consideration, like, am I going to be fully able to handle my own life on my own? Or do I need to check into a, a nursing home? That would have been really fun. <clears throat> um, from the reactions of some of the older uh, blue hairs, uh, women that were on the one unit I ended up on at the hospital, I'm apparently going to be very popular if I had been in a nursing home because I have good hips and my own teeth. So, you know, just saying. Um, and, and, you know. Um, and my own hair. Um, so there's other forms of help you may need to ask for, um, be it through community-based organizations like uh, Victorian Order of Nurses or um, another like uh, Meals on Wheels or are you getting help through a church or religious organization or 
um, through a service club you belong to or uh, through like Veterans Affairs uh, or, you know, a work association or whatever the case may be. Um, you know, so there are many avenues for help. Um, if you happen to be seeing a uh, physiotherapist, occupational therapist, speech and language, and or some kind of um, like a psychotherapist, right? Psychologist, psychotherapist, uh, psychiatrist, right? They're giving you help because it's their profession to do so. However, they may be able to know of other resources that you can use um, and exploit to your benefit in your area, be it a local stroke support group, a stroke walking group, a brain injury group, because um, a stroke technically is a brain injury. Um, they may know of things that you can do, right? Um, and that's, that's where you can find help, uh, right, through other avenues. Now, you've also got to help yourself as best you can. Um, I realize that depending on what you need to accomplish and how you need to accomplish it, you may not initially be able to do that. Um, but just because you've had a stroke doesn't mean you get to abdicate um, your responsibilities. doesn't mean you get to, you know, curl up in a ball and my life sucks and I've had a stroke, so pity, pity me. It doesn't work that way. Um, you've got to take some responsibility for your own recovery. So you've got to help yourself. So for those of you that haven't seen it yet, um, I did the sunglasses at night video because I now have to help myself, right? I went and bought sunglasses so I can wear them under fluorescent lights. Um, I've decided that if I'm going grocery shopping, it's going to be... You know, after 7 o'clock at night, um, because there's less people around, less activity, less noise. Um, I've decided if I'm probably going to go to a restaurant, I'm probably going to go in the last hour, hour and a half of their opening. Because there's going to be less people around. You know, and... Because you are going to need help. Right? And, and by, by seeking out and accepting effective help, right? Because there's going to be a lot of people that have really stupid fucking ideas. Um, and you're just going to have to tell them, no, that's not really a thing. Mm. Like, people are going to have some of the most ridiculous ideas that how you might be able to help. And like, well, you've never had a stroke. What do you know? Yeah. And... I appreciate they're coming from a position of ignorant need to assist, right? Ignorant meaning they don't know a thing about stroke, but they feel this need to assist, and they have this brilliant idea, which is completely stupid. Um, so, at that point, what you need to consider is, you know, is this them actually trying to be helpful, but they don't know how to be helpful? Or are they just a patronizing fuck, right? So if, if they don't know how to be helpful, right, be polite. And if they're a patronizing fuck, well, they're a horrible human and just get rid of them. So, but just remember, when you, when you need to ask someone for help, just be plain with them, be real with them, be direct with them that I need your help with this because of this reason. And they will either be willing to assist or they won't. Now, not everyone may be willing or able to assist for various reasons. Um, part of that might be, you know, various things that could be going on and, and we can discuss horrible humans in another video, which I actually might do. Um, but keep in mind, there will be people there to help, right? Uh, and, and, and you will be grateful for what assistance they've provided. Um, so, at that point, right, just remember, when you're struggling through the post-stroke fatigue, right, you don't have to do everything for yourself, right? It could be a case of give your friend the money, give your friend the list, and say, hey, can you go get me this small amount of groceries? You know, it could be, um, you know, someone to help you do laundry. It could be you know, various things. And for the first couple of months, you're going to need that help, right? I, I'm, 
I tried to overdo it, and I'm going to admit that I tried to overdo it because I thought I could just bounce back from this and it'd be easy peasy. Well, it's it's not that easy, trust me. So I thought it would just be up and running, and I can just just bash through this and 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 as move through it as fast as I can, and and I'll get my my ass back to work. Well, yeah, no, no, it's it's not that. Um. So what it is is you're going to sleep a lot and then you're probably going to sleep again and you're going to wonder how did I just manage to sleep 14 hours away some days um, and then there's going to be days where you're like yeah I got this we're good and then you're going to go out in the world for two hours and you're going to come back a jittery jello useless mess right and you're going to need to curl up in bed and you're going to sleep for 10 hours right or seven hours right and and you're going to try to overdo it and you know what that's okay. You'll do that a couple of times and then you'll figure out you need help. So I'm not the exemplar that you might want to use on when to ask for help because I know there are times when I should have asked for help that I didn't because I was too stubborn because I thought I could just, you know, breach through this. But that's not possible. So on that note, if you happen to like what you've been watching for the last four and a bit months, please like, share, subscribe with your friends. Please, if there's anything you want to know, any questions you want to ask, you can leave them in the comments down below. Or you can reach me at strokeassalter at gmail.com. I say again, uh, strokeassalter at gmail.com. Definitely answer any questions. This content you would like to see me cover, definitely down in the comments or email me. Um, and then lastly, if you happen to know or see someone around you that appears to be going through the throes of a stroke, and the most commonly accepted symptoms are uh, facial droop, uh, inability to raise both arms equally effectively or at all, uh, inability to smile equally effectively or at all, um, stuttering, stammering, inappropriate word usage for situation or context, general body weakness, weakness on one side, inability to stand unaided, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.